Good morning. My name is Gabriel Daniels, and welcome to the talk. Now, as you know, the talk is an informative show on how to change your life. And today's topic will be goals. Now, our first episode discussed your plans for life, your future plans, you know, after you leave high school or after you leave college. Basically, what is it that you're going to do in your life? Now, I was uh, thinking of many things to talk about, and so I have a lot prepared today for you guys. So um, bear with me, and let's get the ball rolling. Now, (laughs) oh boy, when it comes to goals, you really have to go hard for it. I don't care what anyone says, you have to go hard for it. Basically, these are the three things that you must realize when trying to reach a goal. Number one, what's the goal? Two, where are you trying to go with the goal? And three, how are you going to reach the people? How are you, how are you going, going to market your goal to others? Now, Let's think about it like this. Let's think about your goal as a job. Because in fact, working on a goal is like working on a job. And in every job, you always start from the bottom. Now, let's imagine a scenario. You're 14, you're young, and you're looking for a job after school. You, uh, you know, you've never worked before in your life. And you're hoping for a nice position. Instead, you either get custodial services or kitchen duty. And you start out and you're like, okay, this is, uh, I want something better. Well, you don't start off with better. You start off with the worst. What I mean by that is this. When you're working on a goal, you're always going to have obstacles. There's always something that's going to be in your way that's going to stop you from getting your goal to where you want it to be in the beginning. Now, at first, you may be working the job. You might say, hmm, I don't know if this is for me. But after working there for four months, you've become one of the best employees at that store, at that chain. Not only that, but you pay attention to detail. You go in depth to your work you take the time to do it and you do you do a very good job in fact also out of the 30 employees that work at that business you are the only one that comes in on time that is respectful and that gets the job done nobody has a bad thing to say about you and that is exactly what you want When you're starting out your first job, when you have a goal that you want to reach, that you want to obtain, you have to look at these different factors. You know, where am I going with my goal? Who do I want to reach with it? What is the purpose? Will it be beneficial? You know, take into mind these considerations. Consider them because they're going to help you in the in the end. Okay, consider them. Um, now, as far as goals are concerned, you have the ability to become an entrepreneur. You have the ability to own your own business. You have the ability to be in the Fortune 500 or on Forbes magazine, you know, to have Esquire at the end of your name. You have that ability. You have that chance. But you just have to build it up within you. Now, I'm going to name one company that has been influential to inner city kids as well as the hip hop community as well. Now, I'm going to start off with this name. Before I give you the name of the company, I'm going to give you the name of the man who started it. 
His name is Damon John. Now, Damon John was born in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in Queens. As a teenager in high school, he worked at a co-op, which allowed him to work on a full-time basis, meaning that he worked every other week and he went to school every other week. After high school, after graduating, he started a commuter van service. Little did he know that that co-op would be setting him up for his own business later on. Now, in 1992, wool caps with the cutoff were very popular at that time and being sold for $20. Now, John, feeling that, you know, that was way too much, him and his friend Carl Brown decided to make their own hats. And they ended up making 80 right in John's own home. Then they went to New York Coliseum and sold those hats. And in one day, they made $800. Do you hear me? $800. Now, try making that in a regular 9 to 5 job. It's not going to happen. Seeing that he had potential and the drive and seeing that also that, you know, he had a knack for business. He decided that he was going to start his own company. And that was the brainchild. That was the beginning. That was the birth of his business. Now, the first thing that John did was he and his mother, they put up the mortgage for the house for a hundred thousand dollars. So two things so two things could happen. One, John could use a part of his business for the house, and the other as living quarters. And basically, John and his other partners, they began to not only make hats and caps, but they also began to branch into other things, such as shirts and jerseys. And in 1993, John enlisted the help of one of his very old and dear friends named James Todd Smith. But we know him better as LL Cool J. Years later, in 1997, Cool J appeared in a Gap commercial, saying the infamous line, for us, by us. And the name of that company that John started in 1992 was FUBU. Now, from that moment on, FUBU began to slowly take its course. In 1994, he went to Las Vegas, Nevada, to promote himself. And even though he didn't have a booth about his company, by the end, he got $300,000 worth of orders for his clothing. He also made deals with Macy's, JCPenney, and Samsung Electronics. At a point, the company was doing so good that eventually they started their own record label in 2001 entitled FUBU Records. Now, that that guy right there, he could have had a lot of odds going against him. You know, because when you think of the early 90s, you think of crime, you think of, you know, black men, young men, teenagers getting shot, going to jail. You think of all different types of things. And John grew up in Hollis, New York. And around that time, you know, Hollis, just like any other place, it had his crime, it's ha it had his drugs and different things, you know. He could have got caught up in that. But because of the fact that his mother saw fit to make sure that he worked at a young age, he reaped the benefits of that and in turn started his own business solely because of the fact that he had a parent that cared. Now, you see, you have a lot of people out there that have goals that they want to achieve and that they want to reach, but they don't know how to go about them. Why? Because they're afraid that, one, they're going to get laughed at, or two, they're not going to be taken seriously, especially if they've jumped from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. You cannot be an entrepreneur if every one of your inventions or goals fails. You can't do that. You have to have one solid thing and stick to it. 
Forget what the world says. Forget, forget what your friends say. Follow your goals. Do what you need to do and do it right. You know, stop wasting time. You know, do you, do you think Wally Amos got where he was in the cookie business? You know, by not trying? If he didn't try, you know where he would be? He would have been working for the rest of his life. Probably in some factory packaging cookies for somebody else. You know. The man came out of high school. Didn't have a diploma. Eventually later on got his GED while he was in the Navy. And all of a sudden, you know, he learned to cook while he was, you know, in the Navy. And he started to make cookies and, you know, somebody said, oh, you know, this tastes good. Why don't you try selling this at, you know, store and everything like that, you know. And it was from there that Amos began to shop to different stores to get them to sell his cookies, you know. Now, a lot of people are familiar with his company. But what they are not familiar with is the fact that Famous Amos Cookies has never had any commercials. You know why? Because it was too expensive. So instead of doing a TV campaign, Amos went out himself to different parts of the United States to promote his own product. You see, when you don't have money, you yourself are the, are the next to best thing. You know, second to none. You are the only one that can tell people about your product. Yeah, you can have a nice commercial with graphics and all that stuff. But it doesn't let the people know who you are. So he went to different stores when they started selling his cookies, you know, conferences, different things like that. He went to promote himself, to show people, you know, my cookies really are good. You know, uh, try them, tell me what you think, and then we'll see what we can do. And out of that, he's made so many deals. At one point, Famous Amos Cookies was operating an ice cream shop, which is now defunct. You know, but still, he had business going on. He was promoting these cookies himself, you know. That even, even, even his small popularity earned him a guest starring role on Taxi in the episode where Lacan's trying to sell his grandmother's cookies. But you see, it doesn't matter how you start or where you start off, but as long as you start and as long as you go on with your goals. I'm telling you right now, it's no joke. You have something that you want to achieve, you have something that you want to do, go ahead and do it by all means. I am encouraging you to get up off your butt and go out there and find something for you. You know, um, there's another man who was very influential in the fast food business. You know, um, his name was Ray Kroc. You know, Ray Kroc, uh, he was, I would say, a very ingenious man, uh, very bold. You know, he took a risk. He could have lost everything. But he played it cool and he played it safe. Now, in some time ago in the 1920s, uh, he happens to meet the McDonald brothers. Now, the McDon McDonald brothers, they are a fast, they were operating a fast food chain. And, um, Croc saw this as a good opportunity to say, hey, why don't I go over there and introduce myself to them? And what they did was they sold the company to him. And in turn, he paid them a profit of close to two point something dollars. And he took a chance. You know, he could have lost everything, but he took a chance, you know, to run his own business. He had retained the rights to the company going from everything to the name and everything else. But really, do you want to know how the McDonald brothers met 
how he met with them. He was a salesman. He was selling milkshake mixers. And he happened to sell one to them. And just from that, just from that, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Just from that point of meeting, happening at the right place at the right time, little did he know that he would be the manager of now one of the biggest corporations, fast food companies in the world. You know, there are McDonald's worldwide everywhere, whether it be New York, California, San Jose, Cuba, Panama, you name it, it's there because he took a chance, you know. And, you know, he even went to Walt Disney. Now, Walt Disney, as you know, is a famous was a was a famous cartoon artist, you know. And um, they had worked together some time ago in the past, and he wanted to make a deal with uh with Walt, and he told him, "Listen, I have this company. I just bought a burger business, and I think you might be interested." And around this time, Walt Disney had already had uh Disney's Disneyland, and um, you know, Walt he um. You know, he basically he turned down the deal. And well, it wasn't it wasn't the fact that he turned down the deal. Negotiations between the both of them while they were talking didn't work out. So Disney ended up not having a McDonald's in their theme park. You know. But anyway, this is what happened. The result of these three men and where they went and where they came from. You know, think about it. You're young, 17 years old. You have the you have your whole life ahead of you. The world is in front of you and you're just letting it pass you by. When you could be working somewhere and making money, instead you're at home complaining that there's no food in the house. You want something in life, you have to go for it. You have to fight for it. I'm not going to say this again. Only you Know what works best for you. Nobody else. You know. And you have to learn to stand your ground. Believe me. I know. It is easier to give up. Than it is to try. But there's no such thing. As you can't do it. Okay. I'm going to say that. Don't ever. Put the word T. Next to N. Get rid of that apostrophe T. Say, I can do this. I will do this. I am going to do this. You know why? Because you have something special about you. You know, you're going to go and do big things, but you have to believe in yourself. You have to realize that you have potential to go anywhere in the world. It's all about your mind state. It's all about your mindset. If you can't think, if you think you, if you're thinking that you can't do it, then most times, nine times out of ten, you probably think that then you can't because your mind is set in a certain way as to, you know, well, my mom and dad told me that that's not practical. Forget about what is practical and what's not practical. Do what makes you happy, you know. Get out there and, you know, start finding a mentor. Start finding a big brother or sister. You know, look up to somebody who's, in business you look up to somebody who's in wall street or in the music business or you know talk show host news reporter go to those outlets they're there to help you you know try to look up internships for jobs in media broadcasting or um recording engineer and you know studios you know look those things up because these resources they're not there for them they're there for you they've already reach the level of what would you call it they've already reached the level of prosperity or you know how would you say it reach the level of uh, (laughs) not only prosperity 
but of wealth. So much to the point that they don't need anything else. This is all for you. And the more you begin to realize that, the more you will start pushing yourself to do different things. You know, you have the key to become something great. You have the key to go somewhere in life. But you're never ever going to do that unless you take charge. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I look at these companies like Rite Aid, Kmart, you know, and you're like, wow, they're so, you know, popular. But when they first started out, they were just regular drugstores and, you know, clothing markets and stuff like that, you know. And you wonder, <laughs> you wonder, how did they go from being just a regular everyday type store to, you know, millions, you know. And the one thing was this, perseverance. That's another thing that I got to tell you about. Perseverance on your part is very, very, very important. If you don't push to get something, you're never going to get it. You have to persevere. You have to try and try and try again, like the song says. If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. You know, make that movement. Go ahead and do your thing. Don't waste any time. You are your most important asset in this world, okay? You are your most important asset. Only you, are, only you are going to invest in you. And when you invest in yourself, other people will invest in you. But you have to push yourself. You got to know that this is, you know, it's no time to play. You can't play around anymore with your future. You know exactly what you're going for. You know you have the skills. You know you have the drive. You know you have the passion. What you need to do is go forth and push with it, you know. Don't spend time, you know, clowning around and crying because you don't have this and you don't have that and you wish, oh, you know, I'm, I'm 30 and I still don't have a car. You know, I've been working my, I've been working for most of my life and, you know, why is that I'm not getting what I want to? Because. You're not seeing results. And you know why you're not seeing results? Because there's nothing to get results from. You're not doing anything that's worthwhile. You want a car? You want to be able to go to nice places and eat nice food and wear nice things? You have to work for it. You know? This is not a game. We live in a society where people die day by day, going with their dreams to the grave. Because they were afraid that someone was going to laugh at them. They were afraid to fail. It's okay to fail. Fail. You know, but when you fail the first time, don't give up. Go back in and charge again. You know, just keep on charging and charging and pulling and pushing till you get somewhere. That's the most important thing. Don't worry about what anybody else has to say. Only you know what's best for you. And... It sometimes saddens me when people don't reach their full potential. When they have so much to offer and so much to give to people, they keep it to themselves. They keep it stored. You know, it's like energy. If you don't let it out, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, you have to push yourself. Do what you know is, it's, is, is right and take charge. Only you know what's best for you, you know. And, you know. That's the truth. And that's all the time we have for today on The Talk. I hope that this has helped you, you know, on how to achieve your goals and how to go about it. Because trust me, I know it's not easy being out there. It's not easy trying to work a nine to five job. And you're not getting paid the type of money that you want to. But you have to push yourself. If you don't want a nine to five job. And you want to start your own business? Make a business plan and say, this is where I want to go. Make it up 
and follow the plan, okay? Now, that's all the time we have for today, all right? Thank you for listening.